said it. So now that the numbers are going down, we can go back to how people are doing anything for club. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because they, they, they're they in overdrive right now. You know what I'm oh saying? My. Folks, is off the, folks is off the chain right now. So if you had to say who the biggest pop chaser was in 2020, who would you give that award to? Uh, your president. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump definitely was the biggest clout chaser. Okay, let's go right up under Donald Trump. Um, Ted Cruz. I think that it was the Tiger King. Him, yes, yes, yes. I saw the documentary. <laughs> yeah, I saw the documentary. I, I, yeah, yeah, I definitely saw that. Matter of fact, in the documentary, they show aspects of the Netflix film about him. Yeah, he definitely was clout chasing. And he got his feelings hurt because he didn't get no pardon. He just knew he had a big bus out there and they were waiting like Donald Trump's whole last week in office. They were yeah. outside the White House. And I don't know why he thought he was getting that pardon. Yeah, yeah, he was left holding the bag, you know what I'm saying? And he, right. uh, yeah, I guess he didn't give up enough money because Trump, you know, he, to, to get something from Trump, you got to scratch his back or scratch his red, uh, his orange ass. And so since he didn't, since he did not um, bow enough or give up enough money, he didn't get no, he didn't get no, because look at, check it out. The, the former mayor of Detroit got a pass. He uh, got out. Tommy got out. Why were the people, you know, that made me so upset. The people of Detroit were furious. Why were they enraged? Why? No, that was, no, that was mostly white people in Detroit, in Metro Detroit, I should say. Um, okay. The black folks, the black folks, the responses from black people that I got, they were happy that he was getting out. They feel like he served enough time. Um, they wanted him to get punished because he did bankrupt the city. Um, Ooh, he, he did the crash the city. city. So they want, so they definitely de thought that he deserved to go to jail, but they was like, for the rest of his life, they don't think that he deserved that. And it was mostly Metro Detroit, which is among the most segregated uh, metro areas in the country. I interned there and I've been there at least a hundred times on uh, trips, uh, uh, on on uh, flights and trips, so I know the the outlay, the, the socio political landscape of Detroit, and those white folks were hopping mad. They were just hot. They that were he got so out. Upset. I never yes. saw the articles that they were putting out and they were releasing. They were just so upset with him. They said Kwame should move to Atlanta. <laughs> he probably will. Yeah, he probably will, and okay. and he has family down here. As a matter of fact, I think he flew into the uh, Atlanta International Airport. As right. a matter of fact, he did. He did. He flew into Atlanta, <laughs> and he was uh, bear hugged by his family members. So, and he already has a lot of family down here. Yeah. Um, the the Kilpatrick, and we're talking about ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about uh, former Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick, who was a rising star within the Democratic Party in the previous decade, and um, of course, he went to jail for a plethora of um, reasons of after being uh, found guilty on a plethora of of uh, felony charges related to corruption and buying off people and all that kind of stuff and having an extra marital affair with his, uh, his press secretary or chief of staff. And so uh, the Kilpatrick dynasty is dead in Detroit. That was a powerful, powerful family, oh. dying the political dynasty in Michigan and it's dead now. The Kilpatrick name is dirt in Michigan. So a lot of them moved down here to Atlanta. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, he might even be here now. I think he's here now. Because Jamal yeah. Bryan got all that land on Stonecrest, and I would be willing to put money on it if I gamble that Jamal Bryan set him up lovely in a house because he was going to visit him in jail. And he said he just, it just broke his soul to see his brother in jail like that. And mm. hey, I, I'm glad he got out because, you know, people make mistakes and then they were mad his mistress been out. You know, she was on that show from the bottom up. And did her husband take her back? I'm not even going to get into that part. But all mm -hmm. I know is the people were upset. Now, were the people as upset as Dr. Dre's wife is about Dr. Dre and April Jones? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Um you know, and that wow, that, that that woman is bold. Let me tell you. I mean, she wants 
$2 million per month every month for the rest of her life or until she gets married again. And she wants um, ownership of Dr. Dre's name. Yeah. And she wants, uh, you know, residual uh, uh, revenue from The Chronic, his yeah. blockbuster revolutionary album that changed the game in the 90s forever. According and to her, she did all the paperwork for the trademark, for the name, for everything. So it wouldn't even be official because you know how we do when we get something going and then it's not trademarked today. We don't even own it, own it, and, and for real, for real. So many people who had businesses during um, last year found out how legit they were when they went to apply for that PPP loan. So, you know, a lot of us just don't do legitimate business. So she felt like a secretary and grand marshal of Dr. Trey. <laughs> But guess what? He did give her that $2 million when he got that aneurysm. Oh, he gave her the $2 million. And they said she was the one at the hospital with him by his side, nursing him to help. No, I, I no, no. I, I, I never read anything like that. And I don't believe that. Um, she, she, she was trying to, basically, she was trying to feed on his carcass before he was dead. She was hoping that he would die. And then she would have, I, I believe that she hoped that he died. And then she would have been uh, left uh, with most of his estate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. She, oh, uh, maybe she was she, just there supervising the situation. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh, I'm gonna sit right here. Yeah, she was playing her political part. She was politicking. Uh, but it, it, in my heart, I believe that the woman um, Nicole Young is her name, uh, Dr. Dre's wife. I believe that Nicole Young wanted him dead. Like she's disappointed that he survived, and she, and she only got a one-time payout of two million dollars. One time. Was, one-time payout, and that was to pay for her house that she's living in right now in Malibu, which is Dr. Dre's house, but she's living there, and then to pay for the house that Dr. Dre set up his mother, uh, her mother, Nicole's mother, uh, in the uh, west, uh, on the west side of Los Angeles, which right. is the uh, which is the wealthy section of Los Angeles. So he's already doing enough. He put he got his he got her up, and then he got his her mother put up. But Nicole want I mean she want his whole nearly she billion want dollar fortune. She, she want his neck. She want she she need to fall back with her greedy ass. <laughs> yeah, she need to fall back with all that noise. I mean, talking about two million dollars a month. Come oh. on, and and his name and his album uh, revenue. I mean, they weren't married until 1996. Uh, the Chronic came out in 1991, 1992. Uh, Dr. Oh. Dre had Dr. Dre had his name um, going back into the 80s. And it doesn't matter as a lawyer if she helped with the paperwork to um, help him uh, copyright his his name, his iconic name. That was his name before y'all even met. That was his name before y'all got married. You have no rights to that name. So go ahead and take your uh, $2 million payout and kick rocks, woman. Kick rocks. Fall back. But wait a minute. How many of us even knew what her name was or what she looked like before she filed for divorce? I've never even seen this woman before, ever. Well, I, yeah, I saw her a couple of times. I mean, it was rare that she made public appearances. Um, and obviously, it's not that we've seen her. Um, she looks uh, she looks uh, oh. more um, virile than he does. She looks more formidable than he does. She looks, wow, she, that, she got a hell of a chin on her. That's all. You well, know. what's crazy is she's complaining about the violent acts of getting choked out and this, that, and the third before they got married. But right. She married him anyway. And now you right. go back and complain. Not saying that I condone violence of any sort at any time. She should be able to go and, you know, complain about it. But you knew what you were marrying. You knew what you was getting into. And that doesn't mean, you know, no one deserves violence. But it just looked kind of crazy that you sat up there, you put up with it, you enjoyed all of the limelight that came along with the choke out. And April yeah. Holmes is like, I I'll take that choke out for 200, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's totally, yeah, she's totally, I mean, her complaints are totally invalidated um, because of the fact that um, if he did, and I do believe that, that Dr. Dre who has a history of uh, domestic violence and putting his hands on women, putting his paws on women. Uh, and, and, and so it, it is it is plausible to believe that he put his hands on her. But if she did, I mean, if he did, 
she still married him, which totally invalidates him. And then she complains about being ambushed with the uh, with, with the uh, prenup, with the prenuptial agreement, uh, right. you know, just before they got married. And she's going to complain about that now. But her complaints are totally invalidated because you, again, you still got married. You could have right. walked away. When he allegedly choked you and lift you off the ground by your neck before they got married, you could have walked away. You went ahead and got married to him anyway. So your complaints are totally invalidated. No matter how much, no matter how much I renounce and denounce domestic violence and, and men putting their paws on women, you should have walked away. So the fact that you still got married to him, you are out. No, no, mm, take that, mm, the, the, the judge to throw that complaint out. She should at least get a million a month, though. Uh, I, I don't even think she should even get that much. Um, I know that she's got custom to some, uh, some sort of lifestyle, but I think we've gotten to the age. I think we've gotten to the age where, um, and, 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 you know, it's just a new day. Right. Um, a, 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 a lifestyle accustomed to. Right, right. All that, yeah, all that stuff is out the window. I mean, no, no, no more of that. No more of that. No more of that. That you, because it's, it incentivizes women. It really does incentivize women to get with men and to put up with whatever they hate about them for long enough to two, to one, get pregnant, to either get married or both, and to live with them long enough so that they can convince a judge that they deserve to maintain a lifestyle that they did not earn. So, Actually, the yes. new requirement fund, I think it's the new 401k. Yeah, it is, it is. And so I think that we are in a new day and age, just like uh, with everything else, with Me Too, with uh, uh, the Me Too movement, um, I think that with uh, equality, the, you know, the advocacy of equality in um, Hollywood, uh, in entertainment, in the, in the country, you know, as a matter of fact, um, I think that we should come up, uh, we should come to the conclusion that she does not deserve a million dollars a month. She does not deserve to maintain that lifestyle that she did not earn. She should, however, be paid, paid handsomely, maybe yes. five hundred thousand dollars a month, so she can keep, upkeep that house or to go to another house or whatever. Um, Cause she, you know, $500,000 a month, she probably won't be able to afford that house in Malibu, but she does not deserve to maintain a lifestyle that she had nothing to do with. Everything that Dr. Drake did, he did on his own. Now she yeah, deserves- she was writing the lyrics for him. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So yeah, a million dollars a month is way too much. Two million is outrageous. It's an exorbitant amount. She does not deserve it. Kick rocks. I mean, Kick she rocks. the court with her head held high. With her list of demands, I thought I don't know. I thought I was looking at Shaka Khan's writer for a minute when I saw her list of demands. Yeah, Wait a yeah. Minute, though, who does deserve that two million dollars a month? It's K. Michelle, so she won't have any accidents no more. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, she. Oh, that's right. She had a booty accident. So, people have been failing miserably on. TikTok and Instagram live, you know, with, with us in the house, sheltering in place, a lot of white appliance, Maserati drivers were exposed, but they had white appliances in the house. You know, they was mean? like, maybe you should just do your videos outside because we were seeing the people inside their homes for what they were worth. And the lifestyle depicted on TikTok and Instagram just wasn't coinciding with what was really going on. So I don't know. I feel bad for K. Michelle, but I thought she had her butt shot in Jackson removed on national television. I thought she yeah, had that's, that, that's what I found. Yeah, that's what I found confusing. Um, so I don't know if you did. Put it in a fake booty yeah, I, I, and it fell out? I don't understand that. But she was dancing and it just, and then it just and it just fell down and you could see it fall down because she, you know because she loves showing her booty um she loves uh you know uh, turning her booty to the screen um you know she lives she's like making the stallion in that way and that she lives wow. by her booty so she was dancing and uh you know loves showing her crack and then the crack cracked <laughs> her crack cracked correct yeah totally cracked and and the Twitter ate her alive. I mean, they it was ate her alive. Oh they start, my goodness! Yeah, they started chewing on her flesh 
before she even died. It was, you know, it's just like you see something in the Serengeti uh, where you saw where you see the lions eating up on a on, on a gazelle before the gazelle is even dead. They're already tearing flesh off of her. They ripped her to pieces uh, for that. And then she had to come back. You, did you see her come back? You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to explain this and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Girl. Right. Her comeback was kind of like Keisha Cole's comeback from the um, Apple versus <laughs> about being an hour and a half late. Oh, yeah. Then being off key and everything else. Like some things you just can't come back from. Once yeah. you see it live, like you can't come back. You can come back from a bad edit in a reality television show. You can come back from a he said that she said, but you can't come back for something that we I witnessed live right there because, in front of right, us. Right, right. Because as soon as you go on, especially if you're a celebrity, it's being recorded by fans or, or your haters simultaneously. Simultaneously. The way that people have the art of getting that stuff out instantly. Yeah. Like I'm not even on social media, like right there, Johnny on the spot, the spot. People are pulling these things like Meek Mill's lyrics. <laughs> well, maybe we should be get, get more um, prolific. I mean, maybe we should get more, uh, get better at it because that's, that's basically, um, it's an art form. Cool. It's an art form that uh, basically turned the shade room into an anonymous, uh, you know, anonymous blog into a uh, megastar, right that's megastar. Good. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it turned, uh, you know, the shade room from obscurity into a megastar on the pop culture, pop culture scene because of the fact that she lives, the, the owner lives on social media and as soon as something goes down, she's recording it. So even when they delete it, she is able to still publish it. And so, yeah, yeah so yeah, I, I think uh, we need to become more proficient in uh, recording. It's just that I, I don't have the time. That right. takes a lot of time. That's like TMZ where you sit, you know what I'm saying? And you I had an opportunity. Own it. 20 yeah, I had a, seven. yeah, yeah. And so that's another know, job right there. Who's yeah. gonna pay us for that? Well, th th nobody does. You only get paid when you um, secure a story. Other otherwise, you don't get paid. So that's you only you only get paid for which you only eat from what you kill. And yeah. so that's why it's hard to work from TMZ um, or for like the shade room. Well, they you know, were, just, the shade room got it first, and then the celebrities, they were like hitting them up big time. I'm talking 30, 30 stacks, 30 grand to yeah. take stuff down. So right. if they get it and charge you to take it down, depending on how important you value your reputation, you're going to get it taken down. Right. And then they've won already, you know? They've won. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I applaud the people who uh, took, a, uh, took advantage of, um, and, you know, took advantage of this new platform and the ability to make money off of it. I applaud them. But, um, you know, Kay Michelle is not applauding them right now because she got her ass whooped. She got, I mean, she got jacked up. She did. And um, so and I, I almost feel, I almost feel sorry for her. Look, I know it's too soon. Um, okay. We want to change the tone because I don't know if this was stop chasing, but I cannot put my finger on it. I cannot put my finger on how Tiger Woods was in a one man car accident at 7 a.m. They said he was driving way too fast and he was irritated with what something, some situation he was irritated about. He was yeah. upset. He yes. was driving and I'm like, okay. Sorry about that. Woods, everything he does extra is always over the top extra. It's just a lot. He's he is he is not a man at peace. He's, and I think, he's 45 though. He's 45, Tiger. Come on now. You know, I don't know it, what he was upset about. I don't know why he would maybe he just lost control. Clearly he lost control, but that accident looked very bad. Like the way that car was, and they said yeah. it ripped him out. I don't know if they knew it was Tiger Woods, and that's why they was really trying to rip him out the car with the jaws of life. Like, how long did it take them to go get those jaws to get him out that car? He really could have, we could have lost him with that very accident. Well, yeah, we could have lost him on several reasons because of the fact that the car was well made. If it hadn't been as well made as it was when he flipped, uh, it would have cracked his skull. He would have died that way. And then um, when they found him, they found out that he had um, compound fractures, which means he had multiple fractures that cracked the skin 
and were um, to uh, infections, to fatal infections. So that's why they rushed them to the UCLA, UCLA Medical Center, Harbor UCLA Medical Center, not the one down in Los Angeles, but the one in Los Angeles County, as Joe, you know better than me, that is a massive, that's massive awesome. county. Yeah, Los Angeles County is like its own country. But anyway, uh, basically they rushed them to the Harbor UCLA Medical Center uh, and put him into surgery right away because if they had enough, he was susceptible to die from the uh, multiple from the infections from the multiple compound fractures that broke the skin in his ankle and in his tibia which is the lower part of the leg below the knee so um, but he is not a man at peace because from based upon the reports that we've seen he's always in a rush he's always in angst he's always uh, like he's always like 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 a tight like like a closed fist He's always like this. And when you're like that, you are not a man at peace. So um, if anything, I hope that this accident, God bless him. I bless him with love, um, with a speedy recovery. Um, but I hope more than that, or just as much as that, I hope that he is able to find serenity because the dude has none yes. of it right now. None of I it. I know. It's like because there's no reason to be going 80. It's, yeah. yeah, there's a reason why it's a 45 mile per hour. It's a dangerous stretch of road and you're going 80 in a 45. Yeah, and when you turn the corner, and when you and when you go, I mean, when you go on a, de a decline and a sharp turn, there's no wonder you flipped. There's no right. wonder. I don't even understand that. Like, oh, I don't know. Tim Z was insinuating a lot of things, but they didn't want to be rude or probably sued. So they were being very, very careful with, you know, how they were. Well, well, they, they were they were equivocating and they were being ambiguous, but there was a reason behind that because of the fact that yes, they don't they don't want to be held liable. Um, yeah, and also they don't want to spread any scurrilous rumors to where they could be uh, sued. But right. they brought up some good points by making strong insinuations like, okay, so why did you not take his blood again? Right. Anyway, this guy just been in an accident, so you didn't check the see. If he, yeah, they, they were saying that he was lucid and that he, you know, was seemingly, but you don't never know. Oh, no. If that was a, a person a little bit more browner, a little bit more uh, <laughs> crude, they would have been at the site taking his blood before they even got the jaws out to get him out. They would have been taking you said, his blood. You, you said they would have taken a needle. You said they would have taken a needle while he's still in the car. <laughs> While he was still in the car, they would have been getting a blood sample to see if he had alcohol in his system, to see if he had cocaine in his system. The fact that that wasn't the first thing they said, and the first thing they did say hours and hours later was, he didn't appear to have any alcohol. What do you mean he didn't appear? Like, he's in surgery, so how can you appear? And when you found him all mangled up, what do you mean he didn't like you don't know that it was just that right there that terminology he didn't appear like yeah. did you test him or not no that, that was dereliction of duty basically and he's going to get away with it because oh, of the uh, well he's already gotten away with it as tiger as went, privilege as, tiger. It, it, right right it's also uh it's also MAGA privilege as well because he's very much a trump supporter but um, so that, that also plays into the part of it in conservative, uh, you know, in the conservative part of Los Angeles County, uh, where more, I guess it's a more, it's a more wealthy area than, than the rest of Los Angeles right. County. So those people hmm. love Tiger. Um, they love conservative people who support, you know what I'm saying? And if it had been Clarence Thomas, he would have gotten the same treatment. Oh. Um, if it had, yeah, he would have gotten the same treatment oh, they that Clarence they would Thomas. have. He because 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 eliminated. because because I and you and the rest of the uh, and the rest of the public and TMZ believed that he probably was under the influence of some type of narcotics, or at something. least at seven a.m. You doing all of this yeah. at seven a.m. <laughs> like that's right. way too early and, to be that aggressive. Okay. Right, going like eighty miles he was an hour. On his way to an interview. They said he was on his way to an interview. Now. All of these big outlets, NBC, Fox 5, everybody in the morning, Good Morning America, they are still doing Zoom interviews. So Tiger was driving at 7 a.m. on his way to a physical interview. What was you, What was he interviewing about? What kind well, of interview was he on his way to? 
I had well, he, he, one he, outlet say we were waiting for Tiger and we were wondering why he didn't show up, but we saw on the news, you know what I mean? Like they would have, if you was waiting on Tiger Woods to do an interview, that would have been the first thing you would have took to your social media pages and say, we were wondering why he was late. You know, like we were expecting him, but unfortunately, as nobody has said that. No, nobody has said that. And it's, um, they can yeah, it's not better than that. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah the, 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 the excuse, I mean, when, when you, when you are liked by a, a particular demographic or the populace, they will make excuses for you. Just like they did with Michael Jordan when he was obviously gambling and one of the people who he gambled with, he wrote him a check and that man ended up being murdered. Um, Michael Jordan should have been in a lot of trouble. He should have been uh, barred from the NBA. He should have been barred from sports. But because, and he could have, he should have been criminally liable. He should have been criminally liable because America loved him so much and right. he was conservative. And he said that, you know, Republicans buy uh, Nikes too or sneakers too. Um, they loved him. And so they made excuses for him. And the same thing holds true for Tiger Woods. Um, that would not, not have been the, the, the type of uh, treatment that would not have been given to somebody like Snoop Dogg or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, hell no. Oh, no, they love Snoop right now. I don't know. Snoop getting all, that's that Martha Stewart Snoop now. Martha might have made sure. <laughs> he okay, almost was protected. That okay, wouldn't well, happen for... Uh, Migos Snoop or Cardi B or, yeah, it wouldn't, well, no, see, Suge Knight is just a, just a, he's a reprobate. He is just Wasn't a horrible person. Wasn't that supposed to be Suge Knight's pardon? That old boy got the... Cause I thought Suge Knight was the CEO of Death Row Records, and then the real CEO of Death Row Records, who I never heard of, is the one who got pardoned. Oh, you never heard of him? I haven't heard of him, but you know, we I he was the mainstream stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about him for years. I saw a documentary on him in the nineties, wow. the late nineties, early two thousands, where Michael Harris uh, was a silent partner, and he was in, he'd been in prison because he at least, at least was president when someone was murdered. Some Ooh, some can back up over nobody and roll over them again. Right. Like and he didn't literally throw them right. under the bus right. and run over them. Right. But uh but but prosecutors uh, convicted him on being at least the orchestrator of a murder. Okay. And so yes, it was kind of funny that he did and I know that his supporters like Snoop Dogg and others uh, threw uh, Trump some thick stacks because right. this was not a man that anybody thought that was eligible or even in a running for right. a pardon for a pardon or a commutation i believe he so got a pardon random. out of all of the people that was on the list that was like so random when they're like yeah he got out we're like he was on the list right right <laughs> nobody on the list i want to see that list yeah no, nobody no, was that list. Yeah, yeah i would love to see that list as well Nobody thought that. Uh, nobody saw that one coming. Everybody saw the one with Little Wayne and um, oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, oof. Oh, but why is then Lucci was not on that list? Because, because we all it's, it's, thought Little Wayne was gonna hook him up, but maybe Wayne was like, "Keep holding in there, little homie. I got you." <laughs> but yeah, you but can he, get out with us right now, like just yeah, chill. Right, but you can't get pardoned for something that has not been adjudicated yet. His case has not been decided. He's still, he's still, he's only been indicted. He hasn't been convicted. So he's in prison uh, awaiting a murder trial. And so you can't be pardoned, I don't think. I thought uh, you actually... could get pre pardoned. Didn't they say Trump pre pardoned all his kids? <laughs> well, he doesn't have, no, no, he doesn't have the purview or the, no, he doesn't have the, uh, he doesn't have the power to pre, pre pardon his kids, which is why uh, right now I'm looking at CNN on television. Um, uh, many of his kids, it's funny you brought that up, many of his kids are under investigation. And they said multiple, as I'm reading the screen, multiple investigations um, by state. He tried to. He tried to pre-pardon his children. Well, he wanted to, but he doesn't have the power or the purview. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't, that, that is, he doesn't have the power to do that. It's outside of the know Constitution. That's bad, right? What is that even just saying? Because most parents are like, not my child, not my little junior. He didn't do that. And Trump is like, well, just in case <laughs> they might find something, you know, is there any way we could pre-excuse them? And they were like, boy, bye. Like, you obviously are delusional about the type of power that you have. Ugh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. 
I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, it's just been a lot of random stuff. You know, I'm gonna go on to Charlemagne the God. Now, I love Charlemagne. I do. And maybe it's a reason Charlemagne keeps talking about mental health because he knows that, you know, he probably is in therapy for his mental health. The way he keeps coming for Lakeith Stanfield, I don't even think that's fair because I'm like, you don't even know this man. Do you know him, Charlemagne? Keith Stansfield is from like Riverside County. It's from like a town, Hesperia. I don't even know. It's like saying somebody from Akron, Georgia. And we're like, where's Akron, Georgia? And somebody in a little small town just making it as an actor, somebody African-American, you know, in this little town that don't have connections, going out auditioning and actually making it and blowing up. And I don't know why Charlemagne has a problem with him and he keeps coming for him because for no reason. Well, it's not for no reason. Um, basically, he, <clears throat> uh, Lakeith Stanfield hit him where it hurts. He basically called his show buffoonery and coonery and said that uh, they have the penchant, uh, the, the, the proclivity to always trash Black people and to engage in senseless buffoonery. And so because he said that, it hurt Charlemagne the God's feelings. And when you-, you But where you was have, the lie? Where was the lie? There is no lie. He just because said- you remember when Birdman went on there talking about put some respect on my name and yeah. then they had Birdman on the show? Now, I didn't feel like that was like newsworthy, national news, educating us, enlightening us, lifting Birdman up. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no. I, it, 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 I just think that of all the people, because he's really, really going in on Keith Stanfield. Yes. Char of all the people that uh, have been critics of uh, Charlemagne the God, I think that uh, it was most brilliantly dissected. Charlemagne um, and the show's. Uh, the show was dissected brilliantly by Lakeith Stanfield. He did and say it, it so it, eloquently. It was like an eloquent diss from another I mean, he broke, black man. He didn't I mean, he, no curse words. Yeah, he, he he broke it down so scientifically that he should have been he should have been wearing a, um, a white lab coat and a clipboard. He, that's what he should have been wearing. And so he broke it down scientifically, culturally, politically, and so it hit. You, you know, it's just like getting hit right straight in the nose or hitting the throat. It hurt like hell. And that's the reason why Charlemagne, it's just like uh, hitting a, it's just like kicking a dog right in the stomach, right in the side. But I don't it, even it, understand why it hurt because it's not like the Breakfast Club. I love the Breakfast Club, but it's not like we watch the Breakfast Club because we get so enlightening on our culture and they're talking about, you know, Sidney Poitier and the history of and, and Billie Holiday against the United States and all these people. Like, we're not learning the, that type of thing from the Breakfast Club. No. It's and, right and, on the house. So well, why and, are you upset? And, 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 right. And that is the point. That is Lakeith Stanfield's point is the fact that they could use that vast platform as the most popular radio show, morning radio show in the country by far, that they could use that platform uh, as a way to edify and educate and uplift our people and not use the, 90, uh, the, mass major the vast majority of their time um, to engage in buffoonery and coonery um, and to uh, basically, you know, act, behave like a, like the spook at the, you know, spook at the door. And so I think that it hurt because it hit right in the right spot and that Charlemagne is already feeling bad about the show's buffoonery and coonery and to have somebody point that out and do it so succinctly and so brilliantly and so eloquently, um, that's the reason why he's going after him the way that he does. And so, yeah, you know, the Charlemagne the God is in his feelings because he hit the right spot. Lakeith Stanfield hit him in the right spot. And so now he's trying to come out and say that, oh, well, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, Lakeith Stanfield, Charlemagne the God is saying that Lakeith Stanfield um, played that part too well in Judas and the Black Messiah, that he played his... Uh, you know, his snitch role, snitch role. his snitch role, uh, his infiltrator, his agent provocateur role too well, that it must be part of the personality. And ain't nobody buying it. Everybody can see it for what it is. Charlamagne yeah. the guy, Charlamagne the guy got his, he, you know, his panties in a bunch. He got his feelings hurt. That's because all. that's like a saying, oh, Tupac and Juice played his roles 
a little too well. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't hear anybody saying that. And no. I just think that, first of all, the movie was great. And yeah. he didn't even give kudos to anybody, like, about it. But you just went straight for the gut. Like, just straight for the gut. Boom. Yeah, okay. I mean... I mean, it, you know, uh, Lakeith, Lakeith Stanfield couldn't have done any more damage to uh, Charlemagne's psyche if he had to say something about his mama, or you know, you know what I'm saying. Basically, that's that's oh, basically. He would have been as mad if he did. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, because Charlemagne the guy, it, you know, basically he was a, he he was under the tutelage of Wendy Williams. Let's let's be clear, that 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 was he was the protege of Wendy Williams. So he takes after Wendy Williams in that he's extremely messy, extremely petty. And so um, Lakeith Stanfield called him out on it and he got his feelings hurt. So he's in his feelings about it. He is in his feelings. And so he's feeling some kind of way. And he's and, and when you get hit hard in the right spot, you are coming after that person with everything you got. I mean, I've right. been there, if you've been there, everybody's been there when you've gotten hit in the right spot. Yes. And you just go after that I'm person. I'm in the right spot. I'll be like, ouch. Cause sometimes you just have to call a spade a spade. And everybody knows their own flaws. You know, I used to just maybe 2020 just make you like, you know what? You're right. You got that one. Okay. After last year, it was so much death and so much tragedy. Like my neighbor across the street bought a motorcycle on Friday and on Monday was dead from the motorcycle, driving home from work, just lost control of it because it was more powerful than the ones he normally does. But this is a man I see every day walking out, you know, walking out the yard, coming back, stays at home, take care of his wife, go to work, come. It was so much death so close that it just made me like, wow. Like it was just a year of tragedy. So I kind of just fell back on just going in on people. I did. Yeah. You know what? Speaking of going in on people now, people were mad about Meek Mill. They were like, they were mad about the comment he made about Kobe because of the fact that Kobe is Kobe and he's not here with us anymore. But when I looked at the lyric, I can see where a person with Meek Mill's mentality probably didn't see a diss in it. Because if you look at the lyric, let me just read the lyric. He said, this B, I'm effing always tell me that she loved me, but she ain't ever showed me. Yeah, if and if I ever lack, I'm going out with my chopper. It be another Kobe. Yeah, so I'm... Just, I didn't think that it was dissing Kobe. I think he was just saying that he's just going to jump off the, like he's going to jump off his helicopter, like because of the way she was dissing him. And he was like, it would just be a death just like that happened. But I didn't see him dissing Kobe or making light of it. Like I can see where his mentality didn't think that he was actually, you know, dissing him as a, as a Meek Mill mentality person. Now, if I was a rapper where I've done it, no. With another rapper like Shaq, no, never, you know. But Meek Mill, we got to think of the source here. And this was leaked. So they haven't even released that song yet. That might have been something he did in the studio. And then he no. might have been like, nah, nah, let's change that. You know, and somebody in that studio had to leak it because somebody in there who was leaking. It was probably me. It was probably me who leaked it. It probably was just to get a pump up on his album sales. Right. I don't know. But Vanessa... Vanessa sure do be on social media a lot, catching everything. Like, how did well, she I mean, get into this? I mean, she's not playing the background uh, anymore. I mean, you know, ever since the tragic death about a year ago of uh, the late legendary Kobe Bryant, um, she has been very vocal and very present on the, on, on social media. And, and she should because it's, her, it's just her now. So now it's her time to basically, you know, step into herself. Um, yes. She's learning about herself. And she learns that she has a platform and, a, and a, she has a platform now and she's using it um, not only to uplift, uh, you know, uh, Kobe's, the Black Mamba's iconic legacy, but also uh, to live and to use her platform for good. 
And so yeah. she got a she got a hold of uh, Meek Mill's ass. She gathered him. Yeah, with a she quickness. gathered him. <laughs> with I a mean, quickness, she... and people were like, "Why would you apologize in private? Like, why?" It wasn't enough that he apologized. He could have been like, I'm not apologizing to her. He did hit her up and apologize. It isn't, and people are always, he should have did a public apology. That was like, come on, dude. He apologized to Vanessa because that's the person he offended. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. think that he meant any um, malintent. I really don't. No, he didn't He didn't mean any malintent, but he shouldn't have leaked it. I, I, here's what I think. I think he leaked it. Um, sometimes, you know, you're trying to, you know, test the waters or uh, test the air and to see if something is going to fly. And when he got trashed by it, by tens of millions of Kobe lovers, uh, Kobe uh, disciples. Yes. Um, so it wasn't just her that was offended. He offended a multitude of people. That's um, why he got blasted so hard. So I do believe, even though he apologized in pub uh, privately, I believe he should have made a public apology because he offended not just her, but also the people who loved Kobe. And who worship Kobe, and um, are jealously protective of his legacy. Um, to, and and to, I mean, those, those words he used were just imprudent. So if yeah, if, if, I, if put the I mean, album out now, like no one's buying the album, me. Just wait another year. Wait till this blow over and Chris Brown or somebody else do something where we forget about this because now it's got to be something you know, very crucial to happen. Then everybody flocks over there. And now they're mad at that. Now we forgot about this. Like, why is nobody talking about R. Kelly still in jail? What, why is nobody talking about it? No. Wait a minute. Did R. Kelly ask for a pardon? Uh, of course. He asked for a compassionate release and he asked for a pardon. So yes, he asked for both. He asked for a compassionate release during, uh, you know, during the beginnings of the Rona Rage. When they were letting a lot of people out of jail, a lot, a lot of nonviolent offenders, uh, low-level offenders, but that doesn't apply to uh, to R. Kelly Why? because he's uh, he's basically had been indicted on not just uh, a litany of state felony charges, but also federal charges, including the Man Act, which is transporting uh, minors across state lines for the purpose of sexual, um, you know, for the purpose of sex. And so, yeah, he, he he it wouldn't apply to him, but he did at least. But, you know, in the same situation, I would have done the same thing. I'm like, I ain't got nothing to lose. Not so he probably ass. knew. He, he, yeah, he, you know, he, he, yeah, a, a closed mouth don't get fed. So he probably said, well, might as well give it a try. So he had his lawyer try to apply for a compassionate release as well as for um, a pardon from uh, President Trump. But, you know, so. I don't even think they responded. They probably was like, well, they probably just all fell out laughing. And basically. they were like, who's next on the list? I just wanted to be a fly in the room when they were going down that list saying yay or nay or, you know, who the the first cut and then the second cut. Because, you know, there probably was like several cuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, how were they sitting around deciding this? Were they drinking coffee? Were they drinking whiskey? Like, did they even do uh, it in the office or did they say, let's just meet down at the bar tonight? You know what? Meet me at the bar. Bring the list. Yeah, and one, one, one of Trump's <laughs> virtues, uh, ironically, is that he's he's never drank in his entire life. He's 75 years old at least, and he's never drank in his life. So I, I doubt they were doing it over scotch, even though I think it may be many of his many but that's of people the terrible in part, that he's done everything he's done sober. <coughs> he's done it all sober. I think America would feel better if he was like a, a known drunk. <laughs> then to know that you did all of this with a sound mind, sober as all get out. No, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Actually, that's a good point. Let me get some water right quick. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, that's actually that's a good point that you you know you could you committed all this evil and treachery uh, upon the country, and um, you're you you did it with a sound mind, a sound heart. Yeah, right. you're right. <laughs> um, but basically, I think that uh, basically the list was developed. It was a money making enterprise for Trump. Basically, the, the list was developed, oh. and they based they based they based That's upon why they broke it down. They they, they based uh, this is what I believe they based, or what I surmise is that they they based up the uh, the you know the pardons and the commutations of their sentences based upon um, how much money they got because you know based that little Wayne coinage. you know that little Wayne and uh, the the guy that's called Bill Capri the rapper um, Bill Capri uh, that's his real name 
I forgot. Oh, Kodak Black. Oh, that's, Kodak that's Black. Man. Yeah, you know that they basically, uh, you know, they, oh, they sent they a suit. Getting out. <laughs> yeah, they, they sent they sent suitcases of stacks to the White House to get there to secure their release. And you know that uh, Mayor uh, uh, Mayor Mayor Kwame, Kirkpatrick, Kwame Kirkpatrick Kwame, also. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Donations that's been stacking up. Yeah, man. and so yeah, and so um, at least. Did uh, wrong get a pardon? What? Oh, you know what? Who? Tyrone. I'm not even gonna go there because Sheree, I love Sheree. I'm not oh, oh no, he, he no, he didn't get the COVID no. relief package. No, actually, he, he didn't get he didn't get a pardon, but he did get uh, uh out release. Yeah, he did get an early release because of uh, he did a compassionate release, so he did get out early uh, because uh, he has served uh, you know the majority or the bulk of his time uh, for doing the same thing. Uh, that Phaedra Park's ex-husband um, did, yeah. which which is try to defra defraud uh, the U.S. Department of the Treasury, and I just don't understand that mentality because uh, if there's any department within the government that you should not try to perpetrate fraud is it's the it's the money it's the money making department it's the Department of the Treasury. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> come on. A lot of balls right there, though. That's like you got. Oh, kind of hurt. Like you, like you know what? We just going for it. That's that mafia. We going for it. We just yeah, make this money. It takes a lot Don't of let the money. Make us like who all in? Everybody yeah, take, in. Say pow. Yeah, it's a, it takes a lot of testicular fortitude uh, to try to perpetrate a fraud on the United States Department of the Treasury, and because within that Department of the Treasury, you have the greatest, most sophisticated technology. And also the most brilliant accountants within that's the department. Smart, a smart person right there. Now that's a shrewd businessman. That's the person you want on your team. Because right. everybody don't have that business mindset. You know what I'm saying? Well, and yeah. And so uh, uh, Apollo Crete, uh, Apollo Nita, um, he's the other person who also went to prison for, for several years twice right. for trying to defraud, defraud the, uh, you know, and he's still to, free. Huh? And he's still free. Well, he's free now, but I mean, he had to serve several years in prison. And so, you know, Nene, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Sheree, uh, she by Sheree is uh, about to get married as we, I, I guess know. we I'm soon. happy for her. You know what? If she's happy, I'm happy. And I know Tyrone is happy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because uh, they probably didn't get home the luxury life. Like, yes, that's how you want to get out and come home to your woman in the palace. What? Well, he, yeah, because they probably didn't get didn't, didn't get a lot of visits in prison. What did they call it? Conv convalescent? Uh, oh, conjugal. Well, yeah, convalescent is. Yeah, yeah, conjugal. Yeah, they probably didn't get a lot of conjugal. But 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 they are they are definitely conjugating now. <laughs> They probably doing a lot of conjugating. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Well, and I, I ain't mad at Sheree. Sheree, get your conjugating opposite on. Opposite of Safari and Erica Mina. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Those two. Wow, I tell you. Um, this and, is and, all in one week, you guys. This is all the news, like for not even a whole week. We're only on Thursday. This is news starting from Monday <laughs> to right now. Like everybody is doing the most now safari if i was married to safari if my husband ever and they haven't even been the five-year mark i don't even know if they hit the three-year mark and he said one of the worst things i've ever done one of the big biggest mistakes of my life was getting married wow that is wow. such i mean that that is such that is you know he is the very definition that move is the very definition of clout chasing. You're still I mean, living because, with this person. And you ain't even right. a it's Like you, she's in the other room while you, she probably was sitting next to him and he was like, no. Right. On the couch, watching a movie. <laughs> and, and press in. And then she's, she's on her social, she's on it too. And she, <laughs> she looks up and she, probably she's like, she like, what in the hell did you just do? She probably snatched his phone and deleted it. Cause I don't believe that he deleted it. <laughs> so, that is mean, though. Come on now. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's such that is such. A, I mean, he should have his man car snatched for that. I for know. going on the social oh, media to cry. Fur coat. Yeah, to cry that he's walking. Away, yeah. Snatched. To, to to yeah to to go on the social media and to cry that you're going to walk away from the marriage uh, before you catch a case. 
I mean, just go ahead and walk away, boy. Just go ahead and walk away. That was such, that was such a non-play. That was a no non-pit move. person is worth my freedom. I'm not going to catch a case. Because he probably was so angry with her. He was like, you know what? And isn't it horrible that now that our, our relief is through <laughs> social media, anything you're upset about something, you're like, oh, really? <laughs> Everybody is just going to Facebook, going to Twitter, <laughs> and sending a tweet. Okay, some of Donald Trump's most emotional moments. Remember when Obama was president and Donald Trump, every time um, Obama did something he didn't like, he, he took it to Twitter. Yeah. And we yeah. had no idea what was coming because he, he, he used Twitter so much. The minute that he was not the president, Twitter deleted it. Twitter deleted his account. They deleted all his social media like instantly. And the only reason they didn't earlier is because he was the president of the United States. You know, that's terrible right there. Yeah. And I just think that, uh, that oh. like I said, that's just such, such a non-pimp. I mean, that, that was a punk move by uh, Safari. I mean, seriously, man. I mean, damn. I mean, you got to go in there and cry about your wife. You can't handle her. What did you get married for? I if mean, you knew, you knew she, woman. When, when you get married, you know who, what you're getting and what you're dealing with. So, I mean, why why get out there and cry now? Nobody has any sympathy whatsoever for him. And, um, and you no, know, Bow Wow was like, I tried to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Other people try. I know people try to tell him. I know people try to tell him to not make that play, and he made that play. And now he was arguing he, all the way up until the wedding day, like. Only person, the only black they were arguing down the aisle. Couple that I've seen not carry on is Gucci Man and what's her name? Katie or K or yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. They're the only two that I've seen handle this whole marriage thing that went to reality television, had their wedding publicized, had a little show about it, and has had a baby and still. They are still everything. Keisha Kior have still everything in stride, and they still look fabulous. I don't even well, yeah. know if I can name another couple. Yeah, they're just in a different place. Uh, you know, he's you know a different Gucci tax bracket. Different... Maybe it's your tax bracket. They don't have no. those kind of um, problems. No, no, no. Gucci, problems. No, no. Gu Gucci is stacking them chips, and that, that, let's let's be clear. But I also think it's just in a different place because it, it, it's not so much chips. Because I mean, take a look at Dr. Dre. He got a billion chips, and oh. they, he, he's in a terrible place. Matter of fact, he almost died. I mean, his wife literally almost killed him. And so it's I, not I, so much the chips. The stress, and you know what's uh, what was the other thing going back to Dr. Dre that was so crazy is that his house got robbed. He can't even go to the hospital and die in peace. Because now they robbing the house. Who knows what they was doing to the studio? They said Dre keeps like seven security guards with him at the studio at all times and <clears throat> by the door. So now you're no, in the hospital fighting for your life and they robbing your house. Your wife sticking up the lawyer, getting her two million. Like, oh, no, no, that's wow. No, no, that, that's why uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that he. Uh, he, he didn't get robbed per se. They, they showed up at his house and the security chased him away and they ran and hid uh, and they were arrested. So they were later arrested. So uh, they, they tried to rob him. So that, that probably added even more stress uh, to what he was going through. It probably was the reason why he stayed in the hospital so long. But for, for everything, Dr. Dre should carry himself in a different way right now. He is lucky to be alive like Tiger Woods. Um, they were inches from death. Uh, the Dr. Dre was inches from death. Aneurysms kill people on the regular on the regular. So he is, he should count his blessings that he's able to ex live and spend his billion or near billion dollars. On go, April. Uh, and go ahead and um, view this situation with his wife another way. Another thing, I'm glad that he was able to get out of the hospital and get into the studio so that he could go ahead and secrete all of that stress and negative energy and just basically spill it up, spill the contents of his hardened heart onto wax about his wife so that he can get all the stress out of his body so that he don't have another aneurysm because I, he came this close to dying. 
aneurysms. Him and April met because Monice was running her mouth about their business and Dr. Dre, I don't know if he pulled up on her, if he called her, but he checked her and he told her to mind her business because she was the well, one yapping to everybody about them being out. But they were out in the public. And did you see what April was wearing? Uh, no, I didn't get to check, check that out. Restaurant? Oh, I'm like, okay. She was looking like a snack. She looked amazing. Oh. So I guess oh, I mean, she thought, you know what, Amarion, just raise those kids because I need to get these coins for me and mine. And, you know, I'm going to shoot you off a few dollars, but I'm doing me. April is definitely doing her. From Little Fizz to Dr. Dre. Oh, yeah, that's the glow up right there. Uh, yeah, I, 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 um, I think that, well, H, April Jones uh, physically, and she's a, she's a physically very attractive woman, very photogenic, but I think that, um, you know, Dr. Dre is smart, smarter than that. I don't think he's going to go. Oh. It's my wow. Can you Wait, hear me? What happened? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I don't know what's going do on. We, do we, do, did, did we run out of time or something? Or no, I think it just happened. Wi my Wi-Fi has been tripping. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. Well, I just. Oh, okay. Well, um, your girl is in town, Mari Mara. Is that her on the bed? Yeah. Okay, okay I'll be right over. Oh, okay, well, tell her I'll be right over. Um, <laughs> Remember, we ambushed you in Miami. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and she slept. On, and she slept in my bed, and I actually went to sleep. So I'm a, I'm ashamed of myself. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, just I'm just kidding. I tell Mari I said hi. I will. Um, but basic, but uh, basic. I, I, you know, another thing about April Jones, I thought that the fact that uh, it was kind of funny because she said she only did the reality show in the first place to prove that Mar Marion was not gay. Now that's explosive, because he wow. did just get up and walk out on the couple. Um, he just did, he did just get out and walk out. You know, like he went to the store for for a loaf of bread and never came back. And never came back. I mean, he went, you know, so he, he he never came back with that milk or the or the bread. Well, she did just say she wanted him to work on her album, and she was mad that nobody was working on her music. You know, I have actually, I think, been around April, Janae, Aiko, her sister, Marcus Houston, all of them since they were 10 and 11 years old. Like, that's how long they've been under Chris Stokes' tutelage. Since they were 9, 10, 11. Did you know Ty Dollar Sign was in the original Immature? Uh, Ty Dollar Sign no. was in the original group, and Brandy was a background singer, and that was Brandy's introduction to the music industry, was singing background for Immature. And Chris and her mom co managed her together. I wonder why this story hasn't been told before. Oh. oh. It has. Or been disseminated more more widely. You know what I'm I saying? I know. That's just crazy. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot. But uh, anyway. It's, anyway, back to Amari. I mean, back to uh, back to Amari. Uh, what, what is she? What is, no, Amari. Amari. What, what, oh, no, not, no, no. I'm talking, I'm talking about the person that's uh, sleeping on your couch. What's she doing in town? She is here with her mom. Her mom actually wants to move back to Atlanta. And so she trying to appease her, you know, and find her a place, but she takes care of her mom. She moved okay. her mom to LA so she could be closer to her, so she could take better care of her, but she missed her friends, so she brought her here to see her friends and everything. So, I see. being okay. a good well, dog. Oh, okay, well, tell her I got plenty of room where I'm at, but anyway, um, back to the issues at hand. Well, we, just tell my answer. Winner. we have to pick a winner. Um, this hour went by fast, y'all. We yeah, got actually, to pick a winner though. Like, well, my 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 um, clout chaser of the week is would have to be um, Charlemagne. I mean, not Charlemagne. Mine is Safari. I mean, Safari. It's just a that is a debacle, and the fact that you will whine and cry. I mean, that's, how many times do you cry publicly? You remember when he got robbed and he went on to the Breakfast Club show and got yes. interviewed. And he couldn't even start talking because he just started. <laughs> I just got, I just got run. I just got run. I am so sick oh. of you. I am so sick. Uh, but, you know, I would have said Halle Berry, 
uh, because she said that her first kiss was with a girl and then right. she got ki kissed for 30 minutes. You know, she, she wanted to learn how to French kiss when she was a teenager. And so she had a girl come over to her house and teach her how to French kiss and she kissed her for 30 minutes and then she got a French kiss so she could French kiss her real boyfriend. But uh, to me, Safari is the winner of the days. Um, do anything for clout. Who is your winner? Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with Safari because that was just low down. Like, you know, um, I work with Marto Hope from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And as much as people talk about Martel when his whole um, divorce situation he's going through, I don't think he would have ever done what Safari did. I know for a fact he wouldn't. And Safari, you got to do better. You got to do better. If things don't work out, I mean, just go. But you don't put that on social media. You don't clown your wife like that. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. This is the woman you said I do to before God. Okay, and you vowed to be with for the rest of your life. And you was like, she was everything. You was so in love. And everybody was trying to be like, are you sure? Everybody told him he was moving too fast. Everyone. And y'all argued all the way up and all the way down that aisle. And just to go and and do that, like, I don't know. I'll be feeling bad for Erica because yeah. I think Erica Mina does want love in her life, you know? something and she well, I, just, was I mean I think she was a snack and she's beautiful I, th I think, I think uh, he felt well he, he fell in love with a snack and she probably got that good good and he fell in love with that and not really with her so he fell in love with her physical attributes and not so much her and a lot of people uh, make the mistake of uh, basically um, falling in love with some physical aspect or attribute um, and, and not and, knowing how to manage a relationship yeah, it's, there's a difference between infatu the relationship. There's a difference between infatuation and love, and I think that they were infatuated with each other. Um, you know, we, you know, I think that uh, he probably got that good, good. Um, he ain't selling sex tools, se sex toys for no reason, because right. from what I heard, from what I heard, and I never want to see it, I heard that he is quite gifted, and so and put um, he put it online, and it was everywhere online, everywhere. Okay, so he is gifted. Uh, you, you can you can confirm that. Oh no, I didn't see it. I just heard. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, quit lying, the Joe man. You know you saw it. it online. No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, you I, I, lying. I Safari as a person, but I just think Safari like this. Is what I love Safari's confidence about himself and just his confidence about everything, except when Nikki was like beat it. Like he wasn't real confident then, but I felt like he was. Bringing himself back up, his self-esteem, you know, when he got with Erica Mina, she's beautiful, she can sing, she's talented, she's on television, you got a baby with this woman, and now you're crying on social media saying you wish it never happened. I wish I never met her. Yeah. Dun, 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 I, and I just think I, I just think that uh, in this Instagram oh. era, I just think it is Instagram era, era, and maybe it's always been that way. Uh, some people are just bewitched by beauty. And um, Erica a lot of Mina, men are. You men well, are bewitched by beauty and this exotic a thing. Oh, no. an exotic woman. And yeah. Erica Mina is exotic. She's gorgeous. Well, the thing about it is the fact that uh, yes, and the thing about it is that uh, I do find her beautiful. And I, but the problem is, is that a, a, a trophy does not a trophy wife. Does, a trophy uh, date does not make a, tr a wife. I mean, it's, it's just see the thing is, is that there's nothing developed about Erica Mina that is admirable. Nothing. I've watched her um, from time to time on her reality, on the reality shows that she's been on. The, th the problem is, is that beauty, beauty is born. You don't develop it. You don't earn it. You don't, you don't, right. you don't work hard to get it. So she's never stop you from being shallow. She's never had to develop a personality or work ethic or anything, anything. And that's why I, I think that's one of the reasons. Depth. I think that's one of the reasons why I believe that Halle Berry had got that reputation of being bad in bed, because when you're so beautiful and you're so used to being spoiled, you're you're always you you're always you're always, you're always receiving and you're not giving. And you're not. And giving. so and so you're asking for certain things in the bedroom, but you don't want to perform likewise, and so or you're not working hard because you've never had to. So a lot of beauties end up being lazy and or lacking in certain areas that don't make for a good wife. 
So I'm, I'm just like anybody. Is that enough to be crying about? What? Just crying? Or just make? I don't know. I don't know what could merit him doing that. Where it could be just that's, car, that's part of his. That's part of his oldest member. Uh, okay, that's part of his modus operandi. That's part of his personality. He's squeamish. That's word, he's modus squeamish, operandi. And 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 and, 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 and huh? Modus operandi. See, right? Yeah, that, that, that's uh, that's the, that's the thing that police uh, that. use. That, that's that's something that the police uh, use to talk about your pattern of behavior. Okay. Modus operandi. That's how to catch serial killers and um, criminals, uh, serial criminals, like people who rob banks all the time. They they start to find out that you have certain things that you do all the time, and that becomes your modus operandi or your pattern of behavior. And um, so far as pattern of behavior or modus operandi is that he is a punk. He's brittle. He's weak. He always runs to social media to talk about his problems. Uh, he cries on air all the time, or he cries publicly a lot. He whines. He's like a little girl. Um, and, and, and so basically, this is not surprising to me that he took his problems to social media. Oh, he, he is handled. a mama's boy. And maybe he's the baby boy too. It's you hard, know? it's hard for me to it's hard for me to even believe that he's Jamaican. I've never seen a Jamaican act like this. Ever. <laughs> like you're from Jamaican. He he puts Jamaican to shame. They are shaking. They probably have disowned. Jamaica has probably disowned him. Have you ever seen a Jamaica act like this? Hell no. I know his mama. That's his mama did that to him. Well, and this, him there's a lot of mama's boys from Jamaica and from, from Haiti and from the islands. I've never seen a black man from the islands act like this. From the West Indies act like this. This it's dude is weak. It is. It is deplorable how he carries himself in public, and he can't rap. Give it up. Stack them coins. Get walking, stack them coins. You're gonna have to pay Erica Mina uh, child support, and you got to pay her um, uh, alimony. So you need to go ahead and find some way to stack them chips because it's so over. Do you dude. think there's any coming back from this? Like, do you think they could just be back together, holding hands, walking down the street next? Yes, week? I be- yes, I believe there's a good chance. Mark. Yes, yes, I believe there's a good chance if Cardi B and uh, her husband uh, from the Migos uh, uh, Offset can uh, reconcile twice. Twice. Uh, if they can do it, anybody can do it. Don't forget Kenya Moore and Mark Daly. They've done it. Yeah, they've done it. But aren't they on the outs again? I, I, yeah, I can't keep up with them. I can't, the score, I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't keep up with, their, with that score, with that scoundrel. That's another beautiful looking scoundrel. These are rodents. These are photogenic rodents. The, 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 I mean, really. The, the, Erica Mina and King Moore. Photogenic rodents. Ooh. Yeah, photogenic, beautiful, uh, uh, picturesque rodents. To, to basically, it's just like these are the these are low scum, and I think that a lot of people fall in love. We are, you know, and and, and I am too. I'm not going to even lie. I'm not being hypocritical. I'm bewitched by beauty sometimes, but as an older man, a more seasoned and wise man, I understand. As a wise King James the first, the original, right. Yeah, as a wiser, the first King James is that I I take that into consideration that everything that sparkles or everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that glitters ain't gold. Yeah. So and so I just think that yeah I just think that uh, I just think that next time he needs to either he needs to reconcile his relationship or he needs to walk away and stack them chips because he go ahead could he could come out the ass. I think for they should reconcile. Support. I think they should reconcile. Um, Why? Why they don't get along? They argue down the aisle. Why? No. But I mean, what's, there's nothing there. I think they could go to counseling and just learn how to relationship and love each other. I think they could fix it. I do. I don't know why okay. I feel they could, but okay. because they were just getting along so well. They're, both of them are not, they lack depth in thinking and logic, and they probably match each other's shallowness. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. so I think with yeah. the right older couple to guide them or someone that they could figure it out. I do. Do I do. Because just Friday, they was popping wheelies on the moped and, well, and laughing and smiling and hugged up. I think they're very similar in behavior. I do. Well, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the problems. First of all, that was just a photo op. Basically, they were just uh, they, they they were just stunting for the gram. I don't I don't even believe the merits of it. Uh, I, I don't think they. I think as soon as they said stop on the camera, he was like, "Get off my bike." 
you know, basically. And I think that uh, I think that when you're too similar, I mean, sometimes similar works. You know, so I've seen Sagittarius. I like I'm a Sagittarius. I've never gotten along with the Sagittarius, but I've seen Sagittarius make it happen with another Sagittarius. I've never gotten along with another Sagittarius. I barely get along with my sister sometimes because we're so much alike. I just think that they they are very very similar, and that's why they fight so much because they want the same things. They both spoil. They both. They both pretty people. They're both, they're both pretty people who are used to being catered to that, you know, Safari used to date, date Nicki Minaj. Right. Uh, at one time, at one time was the biggest uh, star in rap and yeah. she's still a superstar. Right. So uh, they're used to being at the top. They're used to being treated what like royalty. Like that. so much used to being at the top. Well, I'm, she's used okay. to being catered to. She's used to being spoiled because being of her spoiled, physical catered. beauty for physical beauty. And I know I've, I've seen some beautiful people who were able to develop personalities and able to develop into a whole human being. But there's a lot of people out there who are pretty, who were born yeah. pretty, who never, who never sufficiently developed any other personality trait. And I think Erica Mini is one of them. I don't yeah. think that she's a good person. And I think that grow. because and be around the right people, maybe they don't have the right people, influencers in their life to, to teach them, you know what I mean? Like if you know better, yeah. you do better. But if you're not surrounding yourself with people to do better, then how will you do better? You won't. They need new no, friends. I, yeah. Well, and but the, the thing is that some people can only exist when people are genuflecting at them. So That's when, so when people, true. When, but when so many people are bound, they, they can only exist. They can only exist in a space because they are so stupid or so empty inside in terms of being devoid of a, of a personality that they feel inferior around people who are smart, accomplished, yeah. intelligent, um, and that they only feel good around people who will bow to them. And Erica, Erica Mina, just like uh, other beauties, like Halle Berry, are used to being catered to. So I'm wondering, if they're at home and the doorbell rings, or are they both looking at each other? You get the, uh, they, 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 probably, they probably have, since he came out with that public um, declaration that he's getting divorced. They've probably made up and uh, broke up probably five or six times since then in the last I two know. years. So, um, but oh, yeah, he God. is my clock. Anyway, he's my clock chaser of the week. That's, that you win, Savari. You win. Hands down. You win. I don't know what's going to happen between now and next Thursday, you guys, but please don't be a person who's willing to do anything for clout. This is Joe yeah. Joe in the streets. And, and I am the first King James. And we are out. We out of here. We'll see. For cloud. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get it with you next week. Holla, peace. Holla.